Hello, my name is Jonathan Kowal, and I work with Scott Reeder to support the primary storage business at Ahead in our data center practice. This video is part two of our series on the PowerMax platform. Scott did a great job introducing the platform and why it is important to Ahead and a core product in the enterprise cloud of our digital delivery platform. Today, I am going to go a little bit deeper on the data protection solutions in PowerMax and run a demonstration of PowerMax's local replication solution, SnapVX. Local replication is one of three main types of data protection offered in the PowerMax platform. PowerMax also offers direct to storage backups with ProtectPoint and the gold standard of remote replication, SRDF. Also included with PowerMax data protection solutions is a tool called AppSync. AppSync offers application integration and automation to orchestrate operations for more complex data protection or data distribution workflows where a consistent copy of data is required. SnapVX allows an administrator to make an instant local copy of any volume in the PowerMax. This point in time snapshot is a full image copy of the source that consumes no physical space on the array at the time of creation. As the source volume changes, deltas will be tracked to preserve that point in time copy. If the storage administrator were just to make the snapshot with no application integration or orchestration, the data in that copy of data may not be in a good state for your purposes. A couple common purposes for a snapshot is an instant restore point to recover an application from some sort of failure, or presenting the snapshot to another host for data repurposing, like a database reporting server. These instant full image copies are a valuable tool in IT operations, especially when compared to the time and cost it takes to copy a large database between systems. This demonstration today we are going to show is AppSync creating a PowerMax snapshot of a Microsoft SQL database and then mounting that database copy to another server where SQL services will be started on the database and that database is available for many purposes. So this is the, uh, the AppSync dashboard running in the HTML5 based interface so you have access to this through a browser. Um, you can see this is a fairly clean demo system but uh, this would be the place you immediately get a review of what's going on, how many copies are maybe in progress or if any failures have taken place. Um, also AppSync supports RBAC controls so you do have the ability to create individual users that would have access only to the components you want to give them access to and to the full access of the system. Uh, kind of a day in a life scenario, a DBA could have their own login where they can come in and create the snapshots they need to make for just the systems that they support and not have full access to the system. So they don't have to call the storage admin or the system admin every time they need to create a new copy. They can just come in and run their jobs as needed. Or the other way to do this would be AppSync's REST-based API could be called from another enterprise management system uh, and stitched into a solution as part of our digital delivery platform. So this could be fully automated through a request workflow that is that is tracked and ticketed uh, and can be monitored by uh, your entire enterprise service management system. Um, so looking at this system, I do want to show you, since we are going to take a snapshot of a SQL database and mount it to another database server, uh, we do have two database servers up and running. I have them here with, uh, this is the production system, if you will with the demo database shown with um, actual tables and data in it. And then my mount system, my secondary system here, uh, there's no databases running currently. As soon as I take the snapshot, you will have see those, uh, see that database there uh, in a recovery state. So we're gonna launch into the copy. So diving into the system and they do break out the applications that AppSync supports. So they're visible at different layers. Um, and that helps with RBAC controls, so you can mask off different views from different different users. Uh, here we see our SQL 1 and SQL 2 instance already discovered that, that AppSync knows that the Microsoft database services are running here. Uh, and we will drill into uh, our primary system and we can see the demo database. And we're going to go ahead and create a copy. Um, we're going to create a repurposing copy, so this would be fully mounted to the secondary system. Uh, and we could also put this on a schedule or just run this ad hoc one time. Uh, in this situation, we're going to run it ad hoc for the demo, uh, and I'm going to step you through kind of creating the uh, creating the repurposing copy and all the options to select. Um, so this is high level, just what type of copy are we going to make? Since it's a local copy off of a snapshot, it understands that the un underlying array is there and what type of snapshot to make. We don't have to understand exactly what is there. Just AppSync understands that it's a PowerMax. It uses SnapVX, and we'll leverage that technology to create the copy. Uh, since we do want to mount this and we want to keep it mounted because we're going to use it for a purpose, we have this selected. 
Um, and in this case, we're not gonna create a second generation copy. This would be, I wanna take a snap of my snap and use it for some further development or some further testing. Uh, those capabilities and workflows are certainly here. Um, and now since we know it's SQL, it's, it's what type of integration we're gonna use with SQL. Um, so since this is fully VSS, VDI aware uh, into the Microsoft stack, um, it, we can pick which type of copy. Uh, if it's a full copy, a DBA would know that's gonna truncate the logs and record it as a backup. Um, typically, that's not what you would see. You wanna see this as a copy because there may be a regular backup process that's running that's truncating the logs. Um, you can select do a full and auto switch the copy if something else goes on. Typically, we just set this up as a copy, but this is something that uh, you can decide for yourself. Uh, it's automatically gonna retry three times and then there's some specific storage array settings here, which we don't need. Um, but since it is a local copy, we can dictate if it's a snapshot or a clone type operation. Uh, but in this scenario with the PowerMax, we just want a snapshot. And then now what comes to do with the mount? I could just mount it. I could mount just the drive letter into the VM and then the DBA could have full access to then have the files and mount those into the into SQL Server as needed. Uh, or I can let AppSync mount that up and start the database services and recover it. So I'm going to tell it to mount to my SQL2 instance. I'm going to have it do a, a recovery, so it's actually going to start the database services. Uh, I can leave it with the original name or have it appended to some specific name. So we'll do uh, recovery demo, just something simple. Uh, and then I can choose the path of where to put it back. And since this is mounted to a drive letter on the source, I'm going to go ahead and leave it there. If I wanted to map that to specific paths, I do have that. One nice thing about that functionality is I could have one mount server be used as a multiple target for many different sources uh, and use the, the mounting path control to put those in different places so they don't step on top of each other. Um, and down at the bottom you can see since we are running on top of VMware that I want to make this, this snapshot available to the whole cluster so my SQL Server VM would still be able to participate with vMotion and DRS and those functions. Uh, AppSync does give you the capability to run pre and post scripts. So if there's a, a script that needs to run to put the database in some sort of mode or clean up a table, uh, you can run those program post scripts as a part of the uh, as the repurposing job. I'm going to run this ad hoc and just run it once now. If I wanted to put this on a schedule um, or run it manually later, like create the job now and run it in a change control window, uh, you have that flexibility. And then a quick review of what we're looking at. Just review, make sure everything looks good. And while I checked all the right buttons and we're gonna go ahead and let the job run and go ahead and see this copy happen. Uh, every time that AppSync runs, it, it discovers the application and maps that to the storage. So say you had uh, provisioned a new LUN to the database server uh, and created new tables on it and then went and ran a snapshot. AppSync will discover that automatically and add that to the job and create those, uh, create those second copies. Um, we can see here we're, we're quickly getting to VSS to freeze the database. In that freeze process, uh, it is quiescing any I.O. that may be in memory um, and flushing that down to disk so that the snapshot is in that known restartable state where Microsoft through VSS guarantees that that database is going to be useful when it's mounted. So now that the, uh, the snapshot is made, um, we are going to make that snapshot now visible to the, um, to the mount server. So in, in Snap VX, that is a, a process called linking. So it's linking that to a new device. Uh, it's gonna present that device into VMware to the cluster, um, map that those VMDKs in that snapshot to the secondary VM, uh, surface those up into the uh, operating system, and then start the database. And AppSync is doing the, the full orchestration here. So it's, it's calling out to each piece in the stack, whether that's Windows, OS, uh, SQL Server, VSS, VMware, um, and down to the uh, down to the storage array. Uh, so some of these processes takes takes a few seconds. Some of them, as you saw, are, are very quick. But we'll go ahead and, and watch this, uh, let it complete, and we'll see uh, a mounted database here in, in just a few moments. Uh, one thing to note right there just talks about doing an unmount. If I had had this set up on a schedule and I want to refresh every night at midnight, uh, at the beginning of the job, it would unmount the current system, create a new snapshot and then mount that up again in the same place. So now it's uh, it's created the snapshot, it's added it to VMware, or it's adding it now to VMware, and then it will uh, it will rescan the hosts uh, so that the storage is visible to all the SXI hosts in the cluster, and then uh, 
we'll start the process to, to map it to, uh, to the virtual machines. So we can see here the VM is running on ESX04, so that's where we mounted the VMFS partition first. That was all automatically discovered in that first uh, discovery and mapping phase. So now that the, the volumes have been mapped to the SXI cluster, we can see uh, the file systems are being mounted into the, uh, into the virtual machine. Now that the file systems are mounted, uh, the database recovery process has started. And once this is done, we'll, we'll bring up the remote desktop session on that secondary SQL server and see a, a mounted database that's ready for, for use uh, for some sort of reporting server, test dev, a whole bunch of purposes that uh, you could use. And this process can be scheduled to run, uh, to run every night or however often, ad hoc as needed, um, to give DBAs a very fast process to, to refresh copies on a secondary system. So here we see the system. We're going to refresh. So now here we have our recovery demo up and running with the same tables that we had on the production system. So there you can see very quickly um, we created a, a snapshot uh, without having to go into the array to create snapshots, without having to do any scripting. Uh, and we did it in an automated fashion to create a copy of a production Microsoft SQL database server, snapshotted it, and mounted it and recovered it on a secondary system uh, in a very quick process. Um, so I thank you for your time. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to, uh, to your sales team or you can come directly to Scott Reeder or me, Jonathan Kowal. Thank you.